everybody, Jack McKeever, Ricky Master, Reader, Jurek. I was sitting on my couch today, meditating, and I started having visions coming to me. The fairies were a big part of these visions, and when they start to get involved, well, it usually means I have to do something. So, what I'm going to discuss here on this series is Druidism. Many people don't know me, have no idea who I am really, even in my immediate family because of stuff that happened in the wee early parts of my life. Um, my grandfather was a druid. And he really didn't like the idea that his daughter ran off with my father. And, well, it was kind of mutual. So we've seen him very rarely. But he stayed in touch in a different way with me. See, because my grandfather was a dream walker as well. When you become a Druidic, when you're studying Druidism, it's not like the books of old where all they are is chancellors, counselors, uh, advocates to kings. Uh, they weren't just teachers and philosophers. They were individuals on a self journey. And that self journey is why they knew so much. Because it was nothing for them to pick up and leave and go to Spain, go to Portugal, go to China, come back. Because they would study every new art they could. And by art, it wasn't just a painting. It was the actual alchemy of art. So, Druidism expands the mind. And it is very much a self-journey, a self-discovery. I wrote a book a while back called Spiritual Romance. A history professor read it and said that has nothing to do with Judaism. And I sat there and I looked at him and said, okay. Well, I'm sorry that people who are scholars are so closed off to anything else other than what they believe other than what is written. Because much of what is written in history is wrong. Names are wrong. Places are wrong. Identities are wrong. It's, it's all good. I mean, it's, it's, it's the person who wrote the books were the winners. How were they supposed to know anything? When you look at history and Caesar and things like that, we get little chapters. Little wee chapters, paragraphs really, on what they've encountered. It's funny that in one of the encounters, they said they had more troubles fighting people in the villages, old women and men and children, than they did on the field. That should have been an indication to somebody. But self discovery and self-awareness. That's what Druidism really is. See, this skull here, mankind uses just a little bit over here. That's it. Ten percent. All of this side, all the way around, all the way around. That's the abstract. And that abstract is what people say is not real. Can't be possible. We can't see it, we can't touch it, we can't feel it. You're wrong, you can feel it, you can touch it, you can't see it. Psychics use a little section of that brain. The Kabbalah, the tree of life, that's the only ancient book that has never been changed. 
it is the original. I had a communication with angels uh, oh, a few years back that said, if you want to study anything, study that. It's the only thing that mankind hasn't perverted. So enough of that. I'll get on with what I'm discussing here, Judaism. How did I get involved? Well, through dream walking, I really didn't know my grandfather was doing that. Not until years later, I could do things, see things, feel things that no, nobody else could. Drove me batty for the longest time because I couldn't understand it. I couldn't explain it. I get mad uh, and, and I could manifest fists that would just wipe out countertops, everything. And I'd feel so bad about it. But I didn't know why. Why could I do this yet? My brothers and my sisters, they can't do nothing like this. It wasn't until years later that I discovered this little wizard in my dream. Kept directing me, pointing me to different directions. And I would follow them. That connection with my grandfather was so, so solid that when he died, I fell to the floor. I felt like everything was just wrenched right out of me. But I knew immediately who it was and what it was. And I blessed it. I said goodbye to my grandfather and said thanks a lot because he had taught me so, so much. You see, Judaism, in that self-discovery, that's taking this, starting here, right, right, right here, starting here, and working back. Psychic abilities, they're here, right, right there, this side, right there. That's your psychic abilities. This is an expansion of those psychic abilities. Everybody is psychic. We're just so closed off we can't see. Judaism is like flying over the earth, going through the fog and diving down and climbing up, flying over the water as your wings touch and feeling the zoop, the, the, the ecstasy that the water feels. See, every element is concerned and everything. You can communicate to everything because everything is part of everything. And you can feel that. You can touch that. You can taste it. Many people would say you're crazy. Uh, you're crazy because you haven't taken that self-voyage. Yoga, Tai Chi, uh, martial arts, all of that stuff connects us. It's all a tool to help us connect to ourselves. Very few people use it. Very few people have the gumption to follow it. We're afraid of change. We're afraid of this. We're, we're so paranoid. It's pathetic. But I want to do a series on Druidism. You see, because you can talk to trees, and trees will talk you back. When a hectare of land gets destroyed and all the trees mauled over, I feel it right here, right here. And it hurts. That's how solid your connection to Mother should be. She created us. And these bodies, they go back to Mother when we die. We don't. They do. So, ancient traditions have it right. Judaism isn't so much different than shamanism. We devoted a whole language to our trees because the wisdom we get from trees is just phenomenal. And everybody can have that wisdom. You can talk to spirits. You can talk to fairies. You can talk to tree spirits. You can talk to... You know, you can talk to nature, and nature will talk back. 
and they'll actually make sense because they share their wisdom just like I do with Ricky just like I'm going to do here so I enjoy I hope you enjoy this series it will be a series on Druidism and it's going to be one that um, <laughs> scholars won't like because I'm going to talk about the abstract arts the ones that aren't recorded the ones that doesn't say Merlin struck them down with lightning you know Judaism is a whole way of life and I will talk to you later thanks for listening I hope you enjoy it and don't forget to follow so you get to keep up with the series